Welcome back. So in this video um, and the next we're going to talk about um, some of the local volcanoes in the area and the Cascade Range. And specifically, um, we're going to talk a little bit about the specific methods used to forecast volcanic eruptions here in the Pacific Northwest. This should be a little bit of a review uh, from the last week's when we talked mitigating uh, uh, volcanic hazards. Uh, the next bullet point providing background information about eruptions, potential future eruptions, monitoring, so on and so forth. For volcanoes in the Cascade Mountain Range, you are actually going to be doing this in your discussion posts this week. So make sure you read through everybody's posts uh, so that you can get an idea of what is happening here, uh, what has happened here in the Cascade Mountain Range, uh, geologically speaking. And then uh, the next video we'll get into uh, volcanic activity in the gorge and the boring lava field as well. So to re uh, refresh your memory, so why do we have volcanoes here? We have a subduction zone off of the coast, the Cascadia subduction zone, where the Juan de Fuca plate is subducting beneath North America. That subduction uh, creates magma due to the water in that subducting plate. Uh, producing um, what's just called flux melting and then we end up with a magma plume that then rises up towards the surface and then we get our volcanoes. So uh, this diagram shows you some of the, the main uh, volcanoes in the Cascade Mountain Range. It stretches from Northern California all the way up into British Columbia. So if you notice, a lot of these are close to some pretty big cities, Portland, Seattle. So it's important to know what the heck's going on up there. So we uh, in the Pacific Northwest uh, monitor these volcanoes extensively. The Cascade Volcanoes Observatory, a website you should be very familiar with at this point, uh, they actually monitor these volcanoes looking at what's happening now, looking at what's happened in these areas in the past, and looking for deviations from the, the normal uh, activity that, that is seen on uh, the volcano. And if they see anything changing that might indicate something uh, might be coming in the future, they'll install some more monitoring equipment to see um, just what's happening inside that volcano. And then they'll look at that uh, uh, ramp up activity that's seen and hopefully be able to compare it to activity that's happened in the past. For Mount St. Helens, we've got a lot of data and uh, that, that volcano is very, very well well understood uh, because we were monitoring it, recording earthquakes, looking at uh, gas emissions, tilt meters, uh, to be able to see just what happened prior to that eruption. And then of course there's warnings issues issued um, if there is an impending eruption and evacuations ordered if necessary. So one of the main things uh, that the that, uh, Cascades Volcano Observatory has put together for the Cascade Mountains are these hazard maps. So any uh, volcano that's considered to be a potential threat to any local community, these maps have been made. And these maps are based off of past activity and past um, eruptions. So we see uh, geologists have gone out and actually study the geology of these areas to see, okay, when the, this last eruption occurred, we saw lahars that came down these rivers, they went this high, uh, they traveled this far, ash went in this direction, we see um, lava flows of the same age, so they've been able to compile all this information to be able to create these, these hazard maps. So you'll see very similar looking ones for all of the cascades. And they break it up into near volcano hazards, so things that are really close to the summit, um, and then uh, lahars, which are going to be the, uh, the red to yellow, those are going to be in the river valleys, and then regional lava flows kind of in shaded in tan, and then volcanic ash, which isn't shown on these diagrams because uh, it can vary depending on what the winds are doing. So if there is an eruption coming, there'll be some ash warnings put out uh, in, in uh, combination with the USGS and the Cascades Volcano Observatory and the National Weather Service as well. They kind of work together with that. So once the geology is understood and the threat is, is, is known, we can start monitoring. And so here's a, a, an image from the USGS of some scientists actually installing some of these, this equipment up on uh, one of the, of the Cascades. So it's pretty intensive. People have to go up there and maintain this equipment. Um, a lot of this data is being sent back um, 
to uh, via satellite back to uh, the Cascades Volcano Observatory. Uh, so people don't need to go up there and collect the data. It's a matter of, of monitoring the stations and uh, making sure they're they're functioning appropriately and maybe installing new ones or replacing things if needed. So what the heck is monitored? Well it depends on the volcano and you can see exactly what's monitored on each of these volcanoes uh, um, and the data that you can actually see. But typically the most common that we see are GPS stations to see um, if there's any motion occurring also will help uh, uh, determine any um, up or down motion of the volcano. If it's moving upwards, dropping, those can be some signs. There are uh, cameras, webcams on a lot of the more popular places. Tilt meters, and these tilt meters can determine if one side of the mountain is bulging or not, so a sign of, of magma moving to the surface. And a lot of the volcanoes have um, earthquake sensors, and those are are, um, are pretty important. And then uh, satellite is important to look at um, temperature of the surface that can tell if there's a hot spot on your volcano, looking at the thermal imaging, airborne, so flying over to, to maybe see what's happening with the volcano or uh, collect gas samples as you fly over. And in some places they actually have um, actual um, stations that can monitor the, the gas emissions as well. So uh, you guys will be visiting this website and checking out um, uh, some information so to, to show that to you here I'm on the Mount Rainier monitoring site if you click hazards and you click on monitoring then you can see this map that comes up and it shows you all the stations that they have so if you hover over it it tells you what it is so this one is a GPS this triangle is a seismometer and if you click on it you can look at the past data for the last 24 hours and you can see here um, Things are, are looking pretty steady throughout this entire thing here. So if they were to see some data out of the ordinary, um, maybe they would start to, to watch things a little bit closer, maybe install some more seismograms to see exactly what's happening. Uh, but overall, they just look for that background noise and say, okay, this uh, a volcano is looking pretty stable. And if we see any deviations, then then warnings are, 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 are issued if needed. So uh, if you are interested, uh, there uh, are other maps here and information. You're going to be doing this in your discussion this week, looking at uh, choosing a different volcano. We can check out Map Adams, and we can look at the hazards and get a nice hazard map. So most of the volcanoes have these. Uh, some of them don't. Uh, part of the reason for that is because either the studies haven't been done yet, um, which could probably be because that volcano isn't necessarily uh, that big of a threat. So uh, like I said before, in this week's discussion, you're going to be looking at um, a, a Cascade volcano of your choice and looking at its eruptive history, the future potential monitoring and warning systems that uh, may be in place. And that's where uh, you're going to be taken to this volcano hazards program and you can see all the volcanoes that uh, the uh, Cascade Volcano Observatory is linked to. And then you'll just pick from this drop down menu a volcano that is in the Cascade Mountain Range. So you're looking Northern California, Oregon, Washington to choose. And then if we say we choose Let's pick Mount Hood, and if you click on Geology and History, you're brought to a section that shows you the eruptive history, future eruptions, glaciers. Click on Hazards, um, and you can see hazard maps, also the specifics on the hazards that are, are seen at that volcano, and then you can see what exactly is being monitored at that, uh, that, that volcano. And not every volcano is going to have the same things. So that is that. We'll come back in the next video and talk more about some volcanic activity in the gorge in Portland.